All right. Welcome to this episode of the Teacher Transition Podcast. I am so excited for you to hear from Chris today. Chris was a teacher last year and he heard about instructional design. He learned about our course called From Teacher to Instructional Designer, hopped right into it, and a month and a half later landed his job as an instructional designer. So Chris, thanks so much for, yeah, for joining me on this episode and super excited to hear your story. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, how do you want me to begin? Happy to be here and happy to help out. You know, you... Yeah. Let's, you bet. Let's just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about like, yeah, what you taught or where you taught and then uh, when what... you recognized you wanted to do something a little different. Um, well, I, a uh, social studies teacher. I taught middle school and high school. Um, I started in Austin, Texas, where I was teaching geography. And I had a, uh, an epiphany that I hadn't left South Texas and I was teaching geography and world cultures. And uh, I needed to actually go out and experience some of the stuff that I was trying to teach people about. So uh, I applied for a teaching job in South Korea. I spent four years teaching in South Korea. Um, then I moved back to the States, uh, Michigan, with my now wife, then girlfriend, and got my master's in um, instructional or in, uh, it was educational technology at the time. And because I, you know, I could see that I liked using the technology and, you know, putting it to use in the classroom was, you know, my initial goal of, of getting, you know, expanding my education in that, in that facet. Um, we finished that program and then we went to China for a year. Um, so I taught social studies there where I helped um, implement their, let's say, uh, not online learning, but, but having to transition more into uh, an LMS like Edmodo or Google Classroom. And, you know, I was part of building up that um, aspect of the curriculum. Yeah. And I'm just going to yeah. pause this for one second for anyone joining, like, or for anyone listening, an LMS is a learning management system. So it's where you upload lessons or for, in some of them, it's where you would track attendance and anything like that. So yeah, an LMS, a learning management system. Oh, I got to watch my acronyms. Okay. You're great. <laughs> We've got lots of acronyms, don't we? Right. Oh man. Yeah. Between education and, and now business. Yeah. I'm full of alphabet soup. And, <laughs> yeah. So um, then we moved back from China to Michigan, where I had a job. I got a job at um, a virtual school, working the back end on uh, Blackboard and uh, Brightspace for the two LMSs. And um, that one, like working the back end, I, I didn't really care for because it was like, all right, we're you know, updating uh, attendance and getting registration and, and check. And I, that's not what I wanted to do with the uh, education degrees that I had. So uh, we went back to China. <laughs> for, cool, you guys are so adventurous. Yeah, so, oh yeah, uh, for, for another six months. And then um, halfway through the semester, um, well, we found out that my daughter had uh, an egg allergy and being overseas where you can't quite read what is in everything and, you know, lack, you know, lack of communications. We came back to the States and I got a job at uh, my old high school that I went to in San Antonio. Cool. Yeah. And um, I was teaching AP world history and having a grand old time with it. And then COVID hit and we went totally remote. And I had the realization, it was like, um, well, I've been doing teaching for 10 years now. I'm pretty much at the top of my pay grade. <laughs> you know, 10 years, there's nowhere, you know, much where else to go. Uh, in all of this craziness, trying to teach remotely and in person and grade and everything else, it was like, that's just, it's going to be crazy. Um, so was, that's when I really started looking to, to transfer into just doing an instructional design. Uh, in the meantime, my wife got a, a scholarship to uh, Texas A&M for Spanish. 
and we're like, well, you know, it's a it's a sign, right? We need to to get up and go. You can't pass up a a full ride for your PhD program. Yeah, awesome. Um, so that's when I jumped in and joined your class to like in earnest, you know, really start looking into um, getting into instructional design. What exactly it was because I I'd had a an idea from my the, my master's program and doing the the course building in. Uh, my classroom, you know, using Google Classroom, using Edmodo, uh, using uh, whatever else, they, you know, uh, Skyward, all the different different programs I use. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I was just scrolling through the uh, A and M uh, job board, I guess, and yeah. saw that they had you know an instructional design one post posting and I said what the heck I'm going to go for it and I was only like in lesson two of the class and I was like oh my gosh you know right which ones do I need to look at to help me with this let me um, pause this for just a bit and back <laughs> us up a little bit because yeah. so you had heard of instructional design mm -hmm. like a little bit about it not really sure what it was I feel like most teachers have heard of curriculum design or curriculum and instruction some of them you know some teachers have like a master's in that or some have heard of curriculum development. A lot have made resources for teachers pay teachers and they enjoy like the creating creation process of, of all of that. I love that you'd heard of it. I think you and I met, you had posted in a Facebook group a, asking something about instructional design and someone tagged me. Mm -hmm. I was actually at the grocery store when I got that. And I remember just responding to it and then, you know, being like, it sounds like you've already got this, 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 this in place. All you need is this, this, and this, and, and you're ready to rock and roll and apply and go for it. And I think by the time I got home from the grocery store, you'd already signed up for the course and were in it. And I just knew right off the bat, I was like, he is what I like to call an action taker. You know, there's, there's teachers that are action takers, And sometimes there's like, should I, should I not? I don't know. I don't know. Let me think about this for like a few months. And anyway, uh, and I understand that, but I, I just really admire that you just went right for it. Tell us a little no, bit. About no, nothing was going to change if I didn't do something. That was, that was where I was. I was you know, I, I, I could, wanna, I could like, sign a letter wait. that and just put it on a wall. <laughs> nothing is going to change if I don't do something, not just think about something, but actually do something. So well said. I had I had lots of conversations with my uh, principal and my dean. I didn't. I, I liked what I was doing where I was doing it. Um, you know, I, I liked teaching my AP class. I liked I liked my kids. I liked my coworkers. Um, but it was you know, see. I, I saw the writing on the wall when they they shut down the schools and was like, this is it's going to be it's going to be too much between trying to do this with my wife starting a new program and having a, a little one in the house. It's like, there's just, it, it's not going to work. Something's got to give. Um, so I went for it, you know, filled it out, updated my resume, uh, watched the, the, I, I haven't look, looked at the class since, you know, I got the job because, you know, yeah. mission accomplished. <laughs> right. Mission accomplished. But you um, hopped right into it. You went through some of the lessons. Yeah. I, I jumped you were in. on some of the live meetings that we had and yeah. Mm -hmm. Just just to to get a feel, to figure out what specifics or that I needed to to do, or take all of the uh, experiences that I've had and and be able to communicate those and how they would work well in uh, the ID. That's great. So did you see? Oh goodness, is it lesson two that has, you know, here's how to translate teacher experience into instructional design experience. Like in teaching in the classroom, we call it a scope and sequence in, you know, or a year curriculum plan and in instructional design, we call it this or lesson planning yeah. versus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that was, I, I hit, I hit that one really hard. Um, I did the resume writing one really hard and uh, the mock practice interview was uh outstanding. I took notes on that one. And like, I had them sitting with me during my interview and I was, I was like checking them off as, as I was interviewing. So I was like, okay, you know, this is, she, you know, she was right. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Awesome. So that was, it was great. Um, I'm so glad it was helpful. I like actionable. I'm not about fluffy courses or fluffy content. I took a no, while to launch was... some of the courses and like the perfectionist side of me was like, no, I want all of this, you know, and now that I've taken some other online courses, I'm like, 
oh, I see why some people are hesitant to sign up for, for certain courses. So I'm so glad. Yeah. To hear, I love it when I hear course members say like, this is so actionable. Like it's so yeah, relevant. Yeah, it was. I, and I didn't like, honestly, I didn't even complete the other, whatever, four or five lessons because um, when they, when they emailed me back and I'll go ahead and tell them, the, our audience, yeah, the, you bet. My, my story of how, how that Please. messed up, the, my, my happy accident that came through yeah. so yeah and um, this is great advice when it comes to <laughs> applying for a job and making personal connections so yeah i'm excited for everyone to hear this yeah it um so so after i had spent all my time going through the the uh lesson two and and translating my resume and formatting my resume i messed up and didn't catch the fact that when you trans uh go from google docs that i was using on my chromebook to Word to uh, have a hard copy that it just totally blows up the formatting. So when I caught it, I'd already submitted the application. So I was like, oh no, I need to go back in and delete it and, and re-upload it to, to make sure they have a you know a resume they can read. And when I deleted it, it totally closed the application. Like, oh great. And luckily they had a, a little help desk you know if you have any questions or comments contact so and so at you know tamu.edu so i did told him what happened you know hey this is the uh resume that i wanted to do the other ones the formatting got all screwed up is there way i can resubmit this and they were like yeah sure i'll email it on to uh, you know our instructional design lead who's gonna you know do all the interviews and you know I said, oh thank you so much for letting that happen you know and then Three days later, uh, I got an email from the instructional designer and the office director to come in for, you know, have a virtual interview. <laughs> so yeah, it was a happy accident that, that kept it from sitting in that pile of, you know, virtual resumes where they would have to scan through it, but it got to their, you know, email box directly. So they had a chance to, you know, actually read the, you know, what I had to offer them and they, you know, yeah. offered me for yeah then they offered me the interview which was great you know and then you know it was and, and for about... those sorry for those listening and for those watching even if you are uploading your resume and it doesn't you know have glitches so that you don't have to call in and and connect with them personally connect with them personally anyway i could tell it from how chris went about things part of me just knew i was like he made personal connections or he either had personal connections or, or he made the anyway. And so when he shared this with me earlier, I thought, yep, that totally makes sense. Tell us a little bit about the interview process. Um, well, they, they called me up and I was a little worried about like having known all of the different software or LMS and that wasn't even part of the first interview. It was just about um, how you work together, planning, um, how, how do you handle deadlines? How do you prioritize your projects? Um, things like that. And I was like, I just was in the middle of completing my you know, finals and having my kids get ready for their AP exam. So I was um, well aware of how to handle fires and you know, how to stomp out fires and prioritize and change priorities and do all that on the fly. So that, that was uh, an easy transition, we'll say, to uh, move into is like, you know, this is how you work with your coworkers, this is how you communicate with parents and teachers. This is, you know, all of those things that your teachers do all the time anyway. Yeah. It all just, you know, trans and play, you know, falls in place. Um, you know, let you can also, lesson plan. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me pause this for one Good. second as well. It's just coming to mind. I, um, I remember you reached out toward the beginning of the course and you mentioned that you wanted to work in a university setting or you were interested in that. And you know, in the course, we have guest speakers, some who've worked at universities, some who've worked corporate, others who work remote from home and things like that. I, I love that, you know, that you could go to that guest speaker module. Anyway, I just remember you reaching out and it was like, okay, if you want to work at a university, then this is the, what you want to focus on, or this is what the role does specifically. Cause they do such different things. Oh yeah, I did. I, work I emailed, um, and forgive me, I forget her name, but whoever your Laura. contact, 
<laughs> yes, yes, that was her. Uh, yeah, I emailed her and she was amazing and emailed me back, you know, I think within 24 hours, just saying, hey, these are the, some of the things I do. Um, these are some of the things you might want to touch on, you know, when you're interviewed, she said, congratulations. So yeah, um, that was outstanding that everybody you've talked to had uh, that quick response. And uh, that was that was really good and, and very helpful as far as, you know, communicating and, and even just wishing me well was, you know, just nice to have somebody uh, email back. Like when I inquired about the course to begin with, you know, I got an email right back from you and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, a personal connection, you know, I was, I was surprised and honestly that, you know, you, you got back with me so quick and were, you know, courteous and, and professional and willing to help. So I was like, all right, this, all right, take my money. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Thanks so much for, mm -hmm. yeah, for yeah. sharing that. I absolutely recommend. Of... Yeah. And I'm, and I'm already talking to the choir because I guess everybody here has already paid for your course, but you know, stick well, with it, go through it. It helps. If not do it. Right. You're it's great. Good. Right now we're actually, because we're streaming in the open group, um, totally recommend right it. now, mm -hmm. like it's, it's some people who haven't and some people, yeah, who are, and, uh, yeah, it's been interesting for me to be on this side of things and be like, I'm putting a course out there, you know, and what is this whole side of things like with making courses? I know some teachers are interested in that too. And we'll probably have a service for that in the future, but yeah, learning by doing, like you said, right before we went live right it's like oh yeah, yeah yeah learning by doing so yeah that's kind of what i'm doing i'm doing now they've got um i'm working on creating um courses for the graduate certificate program that they're offering online and basically i have it's in canvas so if you know you want to learn software and do um anything at the university level, Canvas or Blackboard are the two big ones that um, the universities are using now. Check into that, learn. You don't have to be an expert at it, just be able to, to function in it. Um, for my um, interview, you know, they asked me for a couple, you know, they're gonna ask for work samples. So have something ready and it doesn't have to be outstanding. I had in Canvas, I had just taken some of my wife's um, Spanish courses and just started, just uploaded them in, you know, in a module just to say, Hey, look, this is, you know, I can do this, um, for video editing. Um, I had, a in, I just used one of my old grad school projects. It was just like a how to video that put, you know, captions and narration together. And it's like, yeah, you know, I can do this and I can learn. So that's the thing it was, you know, do that's great. Yeah, just just jump in and and you know I've done a lot of figuring out as I go. <laughs> right, I remember the week of your interview, you were asking in our group, you know, what do I need in the portfolio? And it was like, okay, you're interviewing in for a university setting, so here are the specific things that would be helpful. And I'm sure that Laura's advice was great about that. Mm -hmm. And I love hearing from our guest speakers, you know, when they reach out to me of like, hey, another course member reached out, and it was this is who it was, this is what we talked about. I know that they love and enjoy connecting with everyone. So, yeah, I'm glad that you reached out to her also. So, great. Um, tell us a little bit about like what is a day in the life like in your role. Um, well, I've got two, one, one major project right now is putting together this, um, these, these courses, this program and, uh, two major parts of it is getting all of the materials from the professor and then putting it into the LMS in a, in a way that makes it, you know, learnable for my audience, which is for right now, it's, uh, working executives in nonprofits. So, um, the, that's, you know, that's my audience. And I got to think about how am I going to put all of this academic um, material and content together so that in, in digestible bites for these, you know, executives who you know, already have a background in what they're doing, they're just looking for that enhancement. Um, so how do I organize and put together their, the content? And then the second part is editing out uh, the lectures that they do. So get into uh, Camtasia is the software we're using. And, you know, how do I take, 
you know, this PowerPoint and this lecture and put it together in a, again, digestible, learnable online format so that someone who only has, you know, a couple hours a week maybe can, can get the most out of what these professors are, are trying to say. So, so with that, with the first part that you referred to, would you kind of call that, you know, scope and sequence? It's like, okay, I have a semester worth of content. I got to break it down into digestible pieces and lesson planning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lesson planning. How am I going to take, how am I going to take what they need to know and present it in a way that they're going to learn? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's lesson and planning without teaching, without grading. So if you like without that, attendance, <laughs> without behavior management. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, and, it is. It is. <laughs> and then it's like creating the actual resources, right? Yeah. So it's, it's like, not teachers um, pay teachers. And, mm -mm. and sometimes for certain instructional design roles, there's tech involved, but not for others. But yeah, tell us anything there's else. a little bit of tech. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't sit down and HTML out a, a page, but you know, I can look at the HTML and be like, okay, well, that's where the video is. Okay, that's this heading and just cut and paste and, and do some editing, but you don't have to have a huge... Uh, tech background is most of the LMSs have a pretty good design tool that you can can click through without having to really know the guts of it too much. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not a big yeah. It's interesting when I talk with instructional designers or when someone tells me, "Oh, I'm an instructional designer," the first thing I ask is, "So, what do you really do?" Because there are so many different roles and responsibilities that different instructional designers have. And when I hear instructional designers talk about HTML, I'm like, "Okay, they're like." this kind of instruction, mm -hmm. you know, like I haven't looked at HTML in years with the instructional design work that I do. So the, anyone who's listening, that's like, oh, that sounds intimidating, or I have no interest in HTML. You don't have to feel like, oh, you have to do yeah, that. No, no, it's just, it's, yeah. I, I know enough to get in. Like if I need that extra line space to make it, you know, more readable, you know, if I need to get, try to get, you know, that Google doc, you know, embedded into the, the Canvas site, you know, a little bit learning about that, but I, I never went in with a, with a thing. I was like, I took my computer science in high school. And the one thing I learned is I don't like coding, you know, <laughs> me too. That's what I learned. Well yeah. said. So you don't, you don't need it too much, you know, unless you're specifically looking for that, that, you know, don't, don't feel like, Oh, I don't know how to do HTML. I don't know this. Or I don't know that it, that'll keep you out. You know? Yeah. You know, Great. You, if you can, do all the things you're doing anyway, you, you know, prioritize, plan, you know, communicate, um, you, you know how to present, you know, material in learnable chunks. And then, you know, that's, that's what you're doing. It's lesson planning without everything else <laughs> and in a virtual format. So that's so great. Yeah. Right now it's virtual. Mm -hmm. When all the pandemic stuff is over, will you be on site there or will you still be working remotely? Um, they want to move us on site. They're, they're getting me a new uh, laptop and they've just re, uh, refurbished the office. So we've got, apparently we've got this massive like 60 inch touch screen uh, workstation in there that nobody can use now because everything's uh, shut down. Um, and they want to upgrade my workstation because we're going to start building things in um, Captivate. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know much about Captivate. I got like the 30 day trial to, to play with it and it's a daunting task, but um, learning, you know, between, yeah, exactly. My, my boss is like, all right, I don't really know that much about it either. We'll, we'll figure it out and do it together. I was like, all there right, you, go. you just got to be um, enthusiastic about it. Don't be afraid that like, oh, I don't know this. I can't do it. Just be like, I'll right, we'll jump in and, you know, figure it out and do our best. And then what's nice about this uh, projects that I'm working on is this is the pilot uh, presentation. So once it's done, you get the feedback from you know your users, you get the feedback from the professors, you get the feedback from the other instructional designer. And all right, what worked, what didn't work, and you know go back and tweak it for the next cohort. So that's so great. That's so great. And I hope I hope everyone that's listening, you know, really paid attention to that as far as learning by doing. And I, I don't know it yet. You know, some of the teachers in our our courses do you think, okay, I need to know all of this and then I can apply. Whereas the reality is like, you need to know enough and you need to be able to show, you know, in a portfolio or, 
or whatever format, here's what I know. And here's what I can do for you. And then all of the different jobs are so different that you learn a lot on the job and they don't anticipate that anyone's coming in knowing everything and being a rock star of everything. You're a new hire and it's natural to, to learn on the job too. So I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> Great. Are there any things that you're like, this is my favorite thing of all the things that I do with work now as an instructional designer for a university. I love X, Y, and Z. I like, it's like, um, you know, one of those makeover shows or like, okay, you know, starts in kind of blank, you know, plain or this. And then it's like, I get a hold of it and I give it the makeover and then I put it out. And I'm like, I built that. That That's my class that these people are, are taking and paying for and enjoying, you know, or getting, you know, it's like, how can I, how can I make that better? I like, I like that aspect of it. It's like, okay, you know, this, this is, it's like, it, this is my baby. I built this, you know, and I'm putting it out there for yeah. my audience. And, you know, I'm very particular, you know, like, I don't know, like a chef. I'm like, oh, how, how is it? How is it? How is it? You know, get that feedback. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> um, that mostly, makes me almost, almost feel like, oh, I would want a before and after shot, you know? Yeah. Of, yes, <laughs> that's really great. One thing I really noticed about myself after teaching for however many years, I was like, I teach something once and then it's done and it's over and all that effort, you know, and I taught elementary. And so it was like, the next time I'm going to teach this is going to be in a year. And so I, I, I remember thinking, I wish I could just record this or automate it or have this quality of a lesson be available for students that are in, you know, the next door classroom or across town, that same grade level, the same topic or all over the place. I, I love that, you know, you're making something once it's available to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. That's in that. Any, any thoughts about, about that aspect of things? I don't know if that appealed to you as well. Well, well, when I was teaching most of the time it was, Oh, I got to rewrite this for next year. <laughs> like, Oh, that didn't work. Yeah. You, know, you try, you plan it, you try your best and it, and it fails miserably this way. You can, you know, you can change on the fly, but honestly, if you need to, um, if it's, you know, my, the program coordinator, I've got the professor, I've got the users, I've got uh, my head instructional designer, you know, our team, all, you know, throwing in this, you know, tweaks and just, and I can change it on the fly if we need to say, so you know, somebody saying, hey, you know, this link doesn't work or, oh, one of the students said that this video part wasn't clear or the captions are misaligned or something. It's like, oh, jump in, you make that change right there on the fly, it's fixed and you know, you've already improved it for the next cohort. And, you know, it's, you don't have to wait again to, to uh, improve it. it. It's really organic. That's so great. Yeah. Continual improvement and that it like lives on, you know, it can influence many people. I love that. That's awesome. Are there any things that you, like, if you were to look back on teaching and just have like a sigh of relief that you don't have to go to work tomorrow and you know, is there anything, how is your life different now than it was then or any pros, anything that you want to point weekends. out or highlight, celebrate? <laughs> I have my weekends back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I hear you. You know, like every, I think any other and every other teacher. And I remember one of my students asking me, it was like, well, why do you come into teaching? It's like, cause I like teaching. I like interacting with my students. Um, it's like, but nobody ever said, I like teaching. I know I got into the career because I like grading and filling out forms and I don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. And I don't, I don't have the, the connection with the students as much anymore. Um, but that's okay. I mean, you know, that, that is like the part that I miss is, you know, have, having the interaction with, with the students. Um, but that's one con and, you know, having more time during the weekends, having more time to get my daughter to daycare and pick her up and, you know, time in the day to, you know, eat lunch and can go to the bathroom whenever I need to, instead of <laughs> waiting for the bells or whatever that, you know, teacher life is, is all about. And, and especially, especially now with the, uh, districts doing like the, the dual, enrollment where you have to have, you know, have a lesson plan for in-person, have a lesson plan for remote, have a lesson plan. Yeah. So that that's too much for, 
yeah, for, for me, I'm going to pick this one aspect and, and it was, I was ready for, for that move and that change. That's great. Um, I, yeah. I, I've <laughs> the heard... only other thing that yeah. I miss about, well, I don't say miss, um, is just trying to make sure that I stand up and move around and get to the gym more because, you know, teaching, you're on your feet seven, eight hours a day, and now I'm sitting at a desk. So I just need to make sure yeah. I get to the gym more. <laughs> yeah, I totally hear you. Yeah. Um, some of the places where I've done instructional design had those desks where you push a button and the whole thing rises up, you know, but um, nice. yeah, all the different work settings are so different. I know I was afraid of, oh, am I going to miss interacting with people or, you know, I, I hear a lot of teachers express things like that. And really in all the places where I worked, I definitely interacted with people, just not 10 year olds, you know, it was right. now I interacted with coworkers. Whereas as a teacher, I would see my coworkers during lunch mm -hmm. most days and, you know, before and after school, or if we popped into each other's rooms, but I didn't really work with coworkers throughout the day. And that was one thing that was definitely different was now I, I was still working with people and interacting with people. They were just adults and we'd go grab lunch at a restaurant or we'd, you know, different things like that. And it was, it was so much more enjoyable than I anticipate. You know, I was like a lot of teachers, I think are afraid of, am I just going to be in a cubicle all day? Or am I just going to, you know, and I was like, a lot of places have pretty fantastic work settings and, and oh. coworkers and things like that. My work setting right now is, you know, <laughs> bedroom here, but it's all it's remote, temporary. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and I don't, I don't mind also because I don't have distractions of, you know, students coming in and asking for questions where I have to drop in, the, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing and help them. Cause if, you know, of course you, you do, that's what you do as teachers, you help your students. Um, but, here now, you know, unless I, I get an email and I have a lot of, um, I guess they give me a lot of trust and freedom and just like, all right, get this project done, go. And I, and I'll send them in updates. All right, this is what I'm working on so far. And they either say, Hey, you know, tweak this, change that, or make sure you focus on that or everything looks good. Keep going. You're doing a good job. That's awesome. That's also oh, nice. I, I, my, my bosses are encouraging and appreciative. That's great. Yeah. That's so great. Kind of nice. <laughs> Um, do you care if we ask you, like some of the teachers who've gone into t working as instructional designers at universities, it's fascinating for me to hear how vastly different it is with different universities, but do you care if we ask, are, are they similar to teachers? Is it a pay scale where it goes up a little bit every year or goes over on a pay scale if you have more education or are there quarterly reviews and, and things like that for any insight that that would be for our audience? I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Cause you started yeah. this job, what, just a few months, January two? or not January, uh, July. Yeah. I started July. in July. Yeah. Um, my position right now is tied to a grant. Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, I guess official university scaled like, yeah. So, I mean, right now I'm, you know, level, level one, you know, level two, level three, level four, that's where, you know, where my, my, uh, boss is and she's in charge of both sides of the instructional design. So there, uh, I'm doing the, um, the certificate program and then they have the academic side with the graduate courses. So they have another instructional designer who's moving their, all the in-person, and Blackboard and whatever else LMS courses, they're moving that into Canvas, which is gonna be the official uh, management system for all the courses at the university. Awesome. So there's two separate um, projects going on with that. That's great, cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Thanks then, for the insight. And yeah, yeah. grants, gr a lot of instructional designers are paid by grant, you know, a lot of universities get grants so that they can do the innovative projects that are needed right. for, for things like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. That's really good to hear. Um, okay. If you could give any advice to our audience or to teachers, or if you could go back and give yourself any advice a year ago, what advice would you offer? Just go ahead and apply. Just go ahead and apply, you know, do your best, show them what you got, and you know, it, 
because you know if, if you don't apply if you think you can't do it then you're not going to get it <laughs> go for it and, and don't yeah, don't and, and don't take a no personally I, I had a few no's before i got this one too it's like oh you know we're looking for this so we're looking for that you know thanks for your application it's, it's like, okay yeah and, right yeah i, I know it, it can be going. yeah it, it can be daunting and frustrating to apply and apply and apply and apply and either not hear back or get the uh you know, start, thank you for your application, but there are other qualified candidates email. Just, just, you know, it gets frustrating, but just, just plug in because you'll get one, you know, and yep. just keep trying. Yep. And, and don't take it personally. Like you said, right. yeah, it, it's, put yourself in the hiring manager's shoes. Like maybe they received a lot of applicants or maybe there's something really specific that they need. Maybe they wanted you, but there was something really specific that they have to have. It's, it's yeah. And then go forward. Right. Like yep, yep. Just, just keep applying. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, next. Um, and then, and, you know, and practice I had, you know, like I said, I watched the, the interview course. Um, and then I also practiced with, uh, my, my friend that actually works at the university. Like I said, he works in a different department and I told him I got the interview and I was like, you want a mock interview with me? And he was like, sure. Um, just as much practice as you can. You know, he critiqued some of my answers to, you know, he said, you know, he couldn't speak specifically for that department, but as a, an overview, having worked for the universities, like these are the things that they like yeah. to, to, to have. Um, so work awesome. with that. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's great advice, you know, <laughs> just, going yeah, for just, it. just, just do it. He said, cause you know, it's like, unless they have, you know, Superman lined up, you know, like you said, you know, they're not everybody's going to have everything just show you have, you know, the, 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 the basic skills to, to show that you're willing and able to, to learn and improve. This is one of the things my, uh, my boss said, it was like, yeah, it's nice to, to, um, not have to sit down with you and do like specific training it's like if i have a question about something that you know i can't find on youtube or or linkedin <laughs> um then you know i can go on and ask or if it's a quick question about hey this or that but she likes the fact that i'm uh i don't know what's the word to, to go gettingness of yeah take initiative <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. trying to, to try and figure it out at least i can say look I've, I've looked here i've tried this and i can't figure it out can you help then yeah they can jump in with that that's um, great yeah an action taker that's yeah, such a good such a good example yeah don't don't right. sit back and, and wait for them to to you know show you you know hold your hand through it jump in you know ask ask forgiveness instead of permission hey i screwed <laughs> this up yeah how, how can we fix it versus oh i was just waiting for you to to, to tell me totally yeah, yeah. great <laughs> example i think the same initiative you know that you had in just like when I saw your post of what is this about instructional design? What is that? And anyway, and just the fact that you like hopped right in, got right to it, took the lessons that you needed in the course and then went and applied, right? You didn't yep. wait for perfect. And a lot of teachers are so planned out and so well organized and so, you know, so great at what they do that they want to just be kind of perfect before they go for something. It's you know, it's okay. We're, and we're here to provide any help, support, encouragement, coaching lessons, whatever, people need and want to help them have that confidence that they want in applying, but yeah, to also just go for it. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your story of oh, yeah, thanks for having me. taught and going forward. Is there anything else that you want to share before we open it up to questions? No, unless they have, yeah, open up the questions. I'll help, help what I can. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> for those who are joining us in our live streaming of this, um, yeah, if you have questions, I know there's a tiny bit of a delay in what's coming on, on my screen for this as well, but if you have questions, go ahead and you can drop those in, yeah, in the messages or in the comments section. And I'm trying to think while we're waiting for some of those to come in, I'm trying to think of some of them that I know um, some of those who aren't able to make it would want to ask. Work schedule, what is your work schedule like? 
Um, Eight-ish to four-ish, depending on project, how much I get done in the day. Like I said, they, they have a deadline for the project and I do you know what I need to do in the day just to make sure that it's done by whatever the deadline is. So um, it's really flexible if I need to go pick up my daughter from daycare or something or take a longer lunch or stay in, you know, they, they, they don't, they're not clocking hours as a salaried. Awesome. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, what about, yeah, PTO, personal time off or sick days or anything like that? Uh, it's stand whatever, I, you know, I'm a university employee, so I get the, you know, and I just started. So, uh, you know, the minimum number, I forget what it is, 10 days, but they also follow the university uh, academic schedule. So like time off, it follows the schedule kind of sort of, I mean, it's not required. Uh, in my case, because it's an online um, continually rolling project, I'm not going to have the time off that like the academic, someone on the academic side would, because uh, they're continually rolling the courses throughout uh, December. Yeah. So I have to breaks. keep those up. Yeah. And I'll have to keep those updated and, and running. Uh, but Great. that would just be a few hours, you know, check in, make sure everything's working, do your updates. Just maintenance kind of. Yeah. Excellent. Um, what system, okay, Sarah's asking, what system do you use, did you use for your portfolio? Was it on a website or in a file? Or did you email I them just, specific samples? I had, I, all I showed them was the Google Classroom that I had built um, over that last semester for my AP class. And I just showed them, hey, this is how I organize my lessons. This is how I would set up doing this online. Uh, here are the videos that I would use. Here are the discussion board questions. Here are the assignments and just had it all you know, laid out for them with that. Um, in Canvas, um, just because I knew that's what they were working, uh, they were moving to, they are asking me about that. And I was like, well, you know, I'm starting to put together this uh, for my wife. She developed a, an OER Spanish course and so I was like, this is how I'd put it together in Canvas. You know, here's module one, introduction, instructional materials, and just showed it through for that. And then I just had a, a video that I had linked to for a, a how-to, in fact, I think it was like a how to do karate video that I had made back in uh, grad school. Would you, like, would you like to demo any of that right now? You know, that would be awesome. This would, that would make this like the most epic <laughs> Facebook live. Just kidding. That's awesome. So were they all separate things or did you compile them all in one place? Or no, was they like, were just, links? Links? yeah, when I, when I had cool. the interview, I just clicked that tab, said, here's this, click the next tab, said, here's this, click the next tab and said, here's this, you know, if you wanted to get more fancy, I was so uh, pressed for time. Yep. Uh, because everything, once, once they, you know, got the interviews, they're like, all right, we're going to do this for this day and this day. So I was actually like really freaking out, like, oh my gosh, I need to figure out how to work, you know, uh, captivate. Because like I'd been looking into articulate because, and so I was, oh my yeah. gosh, I played with it. And I was like, I, yeah, there's yeah. no way you can put that together in, in, you know, two days. To totally. I mean, you landed a job <laughs> so like, a month and a half after starting any of this process. Yeah. The, yeah while, you know. while trying to finish up the, the semester. <laughs> yeah. Good, good call. Yeah. Really good call. Um, and Sarah, I know where you asked that question with some of the STEM work that you've done. Anyway, I'm not sure how much experience you have with different LMS systems or if Sarah, I don't know if, um, a university setting is what you want, but I would definitely recommend going to the modules with the guest speakers. Um, yeah. And if you do know the work setting that you want, <clears throat> then those guest speakers are going to show you some of the types of work samples or portfolio samples that would be most applicable for the kind of work setting that you'd like as well. Great. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Chris, um, in looking to the future, and I know you've only had this job for a little while, but is there anything, are you hoping to stay in academia or, you know, at a university setting or to go corporate or anything like that, or just like decide later? Uh, well, for now, I'm um, just kind of stay where I'm at just to learn and get better at doing all of the, the pieces that it entails. So I'm just uh, too much, 
I don't want to bite off any more than I can chew yet. Uh, but I've been thinking about maybe doing like some freelancing on the side to do some temporary uh, ID projects remotely or something like that. Um, but I just want to build up, yeah, for now, because, you know, I've only been in, on the job for what three months, you know, I've got a lot to learn and I'm still learning how to put everything together. So um, stay where I am at least for a few more years because my wife's working on her, her program. I'm going to stay here and keep working on that. But um, if I wanted to expand out, you know, maybe start with some side projects. Um, I like working at the university level. Um, yeah, I like, so I like where I am now for now. That's, awesome. yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. And most of the instructional designers that I, that I know who work in a university setting, just really enjoy the atmosphere that it's still in academia, the coworkers, some of the things that they aren't experiencing in a classroom anymore, but that they still are tied in with education. There's just a lot yeah, and, of fantastic things. And it's not, a, and it's not a huge jump going from you know, public education into uh, the secondary level. You know, most of it's still the same. You still, you know, have classes and courses and students, and you're just you know, putting things together and organizing it and presenting it in, in ways that, you know, your students and their, you know, actual, you know, students like you would have, you know, yeah. not much of a difference between a college freshman or, you know, and a 12th grader, you know, it just depends on, you know, what you're putting together, you, you know, you're, so it, it's still the same type of stuff you've already been doing. I've already been doing. Yeah. That's so great. That's so great. And I, I do love how it is a natural growth step, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like your portfolio sample samples were things that you use as a teacher, you know, or, or that you did and, or that you're familiar with the systems and the tools for some of those as well. So that's, yeah. yeah it's it's stuff. stuff that you're already, already doing. You just may not realize that how, how well that translates. So it's like, well you know, if you, put together a Google classroom or an Edmodo classroom, or, you know, you have to take attendance in Skyward or in anything like that. Like, you know how to do that. You know, awesome. that, that's a skill, you know, that, that software. And if it's not, even if it's not the same specific software, it, you know, they all work similarly. So like the jump from Edmodo to Google classroom to Canvas, it, it's not huge because you still know how to put together, you know, your, your sequence for your lesson plans. You can still build your scope and sequence. You know, I go from lesson, you know, weekly lessons to the course level to the program level. And, you know, that's my scope and sequence that I've been working to put together for this particular project. Um, it's like, Great. oh, I've been doing all that for, you know, years and years and years. I know how to do this, you know. That's awesome. Okay, Chris, thank you so much. And, yeah. you know, on a Saturday morning to take your time and and give us a part of your day. Thank you so much. Is there anything, any other last thoughts that you want to share with teachers before we wrap it up? Nah, just just go for it. And thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, thanks for putting that course together that kind of gave me that, that uh, jumping off point. To, to really dive into this, this uh, transition because I just didn't have the directions. Like, okay, I know I'm ready for this, for this career change, for the shift. How do I go from you know, teaching into instructional design? And your course was a really good bridge. I'm so happy to hear that. The word that I hear most people use is confidence. They're like, oh, it helped me see like this job actually relates with what I'm already really good yeah. at. And so I'm just really happy that it is, you know, a bridge and that it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, there are grad programs that are so expensive and there are some other online courses to go into instructional design, but they are more than three times the cost of, of our course. And for some teachers, you know, like you said earlier, you're like, I wasn't really sure what instructional design was. It's a great way to at least find out yeah, yeah, as well as to for sure. And to land something. So, yeah, great, Chris. Thank you so much, and I'm so glad that it was a helpful, helpful bridge. And I'm so excited mm -hmm. to see, yeah, more of what you do, and to still be connected in our group. And yeah, maybe to have you come back and share some tutorials or yeah, or anything. Happy, like that. I'd be happy to. So, okay, I'll pay it forward. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks so much, Chris. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Okay, see mm -hmm. you.